It was a bit of a dry day. Of course, around these parts of the globe, feeling uncomfortably dry in every part of the body would be pretty normal. In most terms of context, anyway. Cities inside the Philippines have been known to be... dense, making the already intense heat even warmer. And I'm no stranger to that. But, of course, this didn't mean I had become completely immune by it either. The climate wasn't any different at the local bus station. Despite it being a big open space with a roof on top of us, the buses made the place feel a little more cramped than it really was. That, and the running engines of any of the vehicles in the area, made the air less natural. I ended up coughing up a storm when I practically inhaled the smoke of a car passing by me as I got there. Normally, I'd take a jeep or a taxi to work, but my job called for a long but temporary out-of-town stay somewhere farther than our usual work spot. How we got there wasn't any of the company's concern though, so we were left with finding our own way of transportation. I guess there isn't much use to complain about that, as if they'll actually listen to the employees one of these days. I had everything ready. Luggage, ticket, money... I was good to go. All I had to do was wait in line. The really, really long line. Though I knew I already had a seat in the gargantuan vehicle, seeing the people in front of me was pretty degrading. Almost every single one of the passengers had their own sets of bags and suitcases to be put in the bottom compartment, and a lot of them stood by while the station's employees loaded their things in the bus locking the doors to get inside. I guess they were just making sure their stuff wouldn't get beaten up or anything. Hearing about different news posts about workers throwing people's things in the bus could make any person think twice about them. It was beyond annoying still, and it looked like I wasn't the only one getting frustrated over this. Low scowls and silent curses were being muttered both in front and behind me. But... That wasn't the only thing I heard. Out of nowhere, I could hear the smooth and enticing notes of a saxophone being played. The way the melody was done and how it just seemed to flow perfectly into my ear made me realize that whoever was playing this currently unknown song wasn't just some amateur. I looked around and soon saw the tall man playing the instrument beside the bus itself. How he got there without me noticing, I had no idea. But hey, didn't mean I was complaining. Strange how security wasn't doing anything about him, but I guess he wasn't really causing trouble. If anything, he was giving us something to balance out the negativity. A saxophone would always be something that I truly loved to listen to, though I couldn't play one myself. The amazing notes this mysterious man played somewhat made me forget how slow everything was going during those frustrating set of minutes. I couldn't recognize what song he was playing. It transitioned between a somewhat slow and smooth pace to a fast and active chorus, soothing the ears, while at the same time making my heart race with excitement. It got me wondering just who was this guy? Street performers weren't really common, and if there were any, the bus station would be the last place you'd expect to see one. He didn't look too much like a foreigner, but somehow, it felt like he wasn't someone who was a Filipino either. He wore a red jacket and grey jeans, with pitch black sunglasses covering his eyes. With a shining saxophone in his hands, I didn't think he'd be someone with low funds. I assumed he was just someone who wanted to give out a performance to the public. Because of that thought, I had a good sense of respect to the guy. It wasn't every day that people would just go outside and perform for the fun of it, and it wasn't often that I get to hear someone playing jazz like that either. That being said, as I found myself snapping my fingers and tapping my foot to the music, I noticed the black fedora lying on the floor beside him. Immediately, I thought that was probably meant for collecting any kind of donations, from where I was, I could clearly see that it was completely empty. I was 
kind of bothered by that. And of all the people that passed by him over the past half hour, not one of them left a single coin. I mean, come on. Even if you're not a fan of the genre, he at least deserves some sort of payment for his performance. Before I knew it, I was in front of the line. A grumpy employee of the station began to load my bags inside the bottom compartment. While he did, I took out a 100 peso bill out of my wallet and slowly walked towards the saxophone player. As if on cue, the song he was playing finished as I got up to him. I gave him a warm smile before dropping the bill in the hat. Looking back at him, I saw him smiling too, showing off a good set of white teeth. Thanks for the show, man. It was awesome, I complimented. He simply shrugged, not saying a word. I wasn't bothered by his silence too much. I didn't really have time to chat with him either. I only gave him a quick nod, along with another thank you, and headed inside the bus. I was seated right next to the window, parallel to the side of the entrance doors. Getting comfy in my seat, or at least as best as I could, I gazed outside the glass pane beside me. Immediately, I saw the familiar, tall figure of the saxophone player, only about a foot away, a grin on his face. I waved at him, and he waved back. The bus soon rattled to life as the engine started, and, out of nowhere, the guy took off his shades, revealing two eyes that stared directly at me. An odd look on his face that made me feel uneasy as he did. He looked like he was laughing all to himself, almost like he had saw something funny that I wasn't seeing. The bus started moving not long after, and I couldn't help but keep my eyes locked with his. He didn't move. He just turned his head as we sped away, eventually coming out of sight. I fidgeted back into a proper sitting position, unsure that what had happened was even real or not. Whatever the case, I had a hard time trying to think of something else other than that odd man's stare and giggling. What the hell was he laughing about? It took about an hour and a half before I got to my stop. Dropping my feet onto the sidewalk, I could faintly see the top floors of the hotel my job had required us to check and just a few streets away from where I was. Even with my luggage in hand, I could walk my way there without too many problems. Time would be annoying though, making me debate the thought of hitching another ride or not as I took out my bags. But all my thoughts were immediately drowned out. After hearing a familiar song, one played by a saxophone. A cold sweat slid down my neck. Whether it was because of the heat or what I heard, was not something I could decide. I frantically searched everywhere, trying to find whoever it was playing the song and hoping that it wasn't... There. There he was. The overpass behind me, a toll bridge running from one side of the highway to the other, packed with pedestrians moving back and forth, up and down its stairs. Among those people, I saw him, the very same saxophone player. Despite all the excess noise around us, I could hear him play the song very clearly, as if I was listening to his own personal radio frequency with my ears. I stood there, desperately trying to figure out how a man can outrun a bus with no traffic that passed several miles. My brain kept telling itself that it was impossible, but just seeing him there somehow made it harder for me to believe. I kept staring at him, and though he had dark sunglasses on, it felt like he knew I was there, and he was returning my gaze with his. The song ended once again, and when it did, 
he turned his head towards me. The way he slowly smiled chilled me. He raised his left arm and waved at me. I didn't dare wave back. I heard the bus beside me starting its engine, soon beginning to depart. Still, I couldn't take my eyes away from him. He stopped waving, then shook his head in disapproval. It felt like he was mocking someone. I don't know if it was either me or someone else. Without warning, he outstretched his hand and pointed somewhere, his sinister smile seeming to grow even larger. I turned to look, but only saw the bus I was previously on waiting for a stoplight to change. I turned back, and he was gone. I looked for him everywhere, on the overpass and below it. He simply wasn't there. He vanished out of sight without a single hint of his presence leaving a trace. An alarm from my wristwatch began to beep, and it didn't take long before I remembered why I had gone there in the first place. Turning back to where I was headed, I started walking down the busy sidewalks, confused and frightened thoughts intermingling with certain plans for the day. I came to a full stop again, hearing a loud crash, and had my left ears ringing. Screams were heard all over the streets, as many people ran away, others taking out their phones to either call for authorities or record the disaster that was happening in front of them. In front of me was the bus I had taken earlier, toppled over and most of it crushed after colliding with an oncoming truck and eventually hitting a telephone pole.